episodes. Okay, thank you, thank you very much, and uh, and uh, hi everybody, and uh, good afternoon. Uh, let's see, I'll start my the sharing of sharing my screen uh, just in a second or two. Um, let's see, it seems to have frozen a bit, but. So, so now it should be visible uh, to you. So again, hi, hi everybody, and um, uh, my my turn um, will. It's my turn to speak, and I will talk about something that I call here Diggy bites, and um, and with Diggy bites I mean digestible exercises, small exercises that can be used uh, as a part of a course or as the red uh, thread running through one course. And, um, and I am myself a historian, um, let's see, yeah, and also a blogger, a Twitter historian, tweeting, tweeting every now and then, and editor-in-chief, so I have been thinking a lot about writing and um, popularizing uh, historical knowledge. I was also a couple of years ago a responsible uh, leader of the so-called Digital Leap uh, Digiloika in History on MA level at the University of Helsinki and we updated our, our knowledge, the knowledge of teachers, when it came to uh, many digital tools that were available for teaching, and also we updated the uh, guidelines for students when it came to use, using, for example, digitalized material. And uh, these uh, uh, great leaps, like these digi loika digital leaps, uh, they may be great. Uh, but at the same time, I have also become aware of uh, that there are lots of details and sometimes you should really think about small bites and small pieces that you can prepare for teaching. You can, for example, when using Twitter for in a course, you can only include so many tweets or so many words in a course project. So. So I have started to talk about this digestible diggy bites or diggy nibbles, something that little by little uh, will help uh, the students to think about how they how they see history, how they study history, how they can inform others about history, and um, and also also kind of you we have all learned a lot about going to being on the top of everything and, and taking leaps and so on. But I also think that we need some rambling uh, uh, trial and error things. And, uh, and they come little by little from one course to another. Uh, it's important to kind of find the right scale when you are taking a course. You can't um, do that much in one course. So. Uh, how to take one bite at a time. Let's take uh, uh, one uh, more thing about this. Uh, when I talk about these terms, concepts, uh, when I'm here talking about ICT, I mean information and uh, communication technology. So very simply, um, different digital platforms in this context. And the question is how to make use of and how to make sense of historical sources and historical research on this kind of platforms. They may be, and I have used blogs, wiki platforms, Twitter, uh, Transcribus, which is program for computer-assisted handwritten text recognition. And uh, with these uh, little exercises, these little bites, um, students are introduced and we teachers are also introduced to useful ways of uh, useful ways of talking about history 
ways that can be useful for us as historians, but hopefully also for students later when they become maybe teachers, editors, journalists, people working in the administration. So it's not just about learning the, um, the skills, it's also about participating to the production of knowledge and being aware of one's role as one producing knowledge for a certain audience. So with the, um, we have learned a lot of a lot about the use of Twitter. I think if if not, if you're not using Twitter yourself yourselves, you probably have learned from news how politicians and um, you know, different uh, groups are using Twitter to argue and to share information and to uh, influence other people. And, um, and uh, when it comes to history in Twitter, I have been using Twitter maybe for 10 years and um, occasionally I have participated to some uh, role-playing projects in Twitter. And some of them have been coordinated by the broadcasting company in Finland, Yle, and also by active high school teachers. There have been a Twitter tweet project on winter war in 2015. Uh, there were the Yle Broadcasting Company produced some Twitter accounts with uh, information about the um, with with information about the um, what was going on during the winter war, and then. Uh, several school classes came in, w students having personal accounts and um, pre representing uh, thoughts and ideas of ordinary people who were experiencing the war. Also, some scholars came in. Uh, it was not really a planned thing, but people got interested in, for example, a colleague of mine was studying uh, Claude Holma. And um, a person who really assisted and commented on the winter war, and he created a, or they created a Twitter account to uh, express the feelings and observations of Claude Holma. I myself participated as a uh, ordinary person observing the events from the point of view of my home, home hometown, and then there were other. Uh, tweet projects. One was about Titanic, the other one was about the, let's see, um, you know, the time 100 years ago when alcohol, selling alcohol was prohibited. That, that was one uh, tweeting project. And uh, I have seen that some school teachers in Finland use Twitter, and you can find these uh, projects on Twitter if you use the hashtags. Um, not so much tweeting has been used on university courses, at least to my knowledge. However, a couple of years ago, in 2017, following the Twitter discussion, I noticed that there were quite aggressive tweets commenting on the uh, civil war centenary that was going to take place in one year. As you can imagine, when people are talking about killing and war in Twitter, it may become nasty and uncivilized. And, and then uh, history was used for political means, which um, caused concern uh, among us historians. So uh, me and my colleagues got to this idea that we could at least try to tweet differently about the civil war in this case. So we planned a course on research-based tweeting about, ev about events during the civil war in Helsinki in 1918. It was a joint venture, a joint venture of uh, three university historians, and we got advice from um, Ule Broadcasting Company and from the Helsinki Uni communication services and several others who had been involved in tweeting and could advise about the pros and cons and 
possible problems. And of course, it was one course. It was not a massive project to change everything in the social media, but it was also about making a difference and thinking about making a difference. And in the picture, you can see the master account of the course. It was run by the teachers and uh, the students had their own individual accounts taking different uh, uh, standpoints to this historical event. And then the master account retweeted all the tweets so, so that people could follow either the individual accounts or the master account. There was lots of material and uh, one of the point of the course was to show the students how wonderful digital sources we actually have. Uh, plenty of pictures, publications, so different kinds of sources, also statistics available, open access uh, for everybody. So each student um, studied one person or one topic or a special place or event that was related to this um, civil war uh, time in Helsinki in in 19, nine, uh, 1918. There were archival documents, books and pictures that were studied and collected. And we had kind of, uh, during the course, we had lectures on the events of the of the year 1918. We had workshops on searching for the material. We had workshops on using the social media and digital sources. And students prepared a minimum of 15 tweets to be published during, the, during April 2018. It was a time when there, were, uh, there was uh, occupation took place in Helsinki in April uh, 100 years previously. So that was why we chose the, this uh, month. And there you can see some of the accounts, the pictures, there were imagined persons based on um, actual sources, and there were real people like Sylvi Kyllikki Kilpi, uh, later a politician who was uh, reporting the civil war in Helsinki in her teenager diary. So there were different kinds of approaches to this material. And you see, it's 15 tweets, so it's not really that much, but it was quite a lot of work anyway for the students. And, um, and I think it was really uh, important and, and good to have this course and to think about both the use of sources, availability of the sources, how to express information in Twitter. You have to be quite short when expressing yourself and um, student feedback was mostly positive. I think they found uh, quite a lot of, uh, um, um, they found out new things and uh, a lot of uh, what we were discussing was also somehow connected to the very core questions related to historical research, um, source criticism, um, how to express oneself um, I think this um, um, picture uh, on, on the right hand um, presents very important issues that are relevant both when in social media and also when studying the historical events. T, is it true? Age, is it hurtful? I, is it illegal? Or, or then L, is it legal? considering, for example, the copyrights of pictures. N, is it necessary? And K, is it kind? Of course, then uh, one has to think about the limited time that is available for planning. At least I do all my courses quite under uh, time pressure. There is not so much time. It was really good that we were several teachers uh, sharing the effort because all 
uh, all all work available was was needed for planning and then we really benefited from the uh, other people interested in in tweeting listening to their advice and and extra points uh, and so that is one thing one point that i would like to make all extra elements require quite a lot of work and preparing so for me it was natural to choose familiar tools like twitter which i had been using quite for a long time of course you don't have to you don't really have to be uh, expert on using twitter i'm not an ex expert really but it's it's it helps if you if you have something that is familiar to you some some kind of platform that you already know then one thing that um, when planning a course what i thought was um, it's kind of a challenge and one really has to think about it and in some courses i think i it has been better balanced sometimes maybe not so well balanced um, when one is using this kind of uh, digital tools there will be a lot of technical matters small details that you have to check that students have understood or are familiar with and uh, and one could easily use a whole course in these technical matters but you want also to have the content, the historical content in this case, the research, the um, per individual studies and discussion on how we study a specific topic. So, so this is a, an important thing to think when uh, planning the course, how to balance between the kind of practical matters and then the um, content related to the discipline that the students are studying and one thing that i think is really important to to have simple checkpoints to make sure that everyone everyone has been following and is up to date when it comes to the technical matters kind of little tasks to check that everyone has managed to log in to create their account um, in the style of once you are online tick a box on this page so that we know that there are no technical problems they are these are very kind of practical pragmatic simple things and i was personally at first i was hesitating whether it would be too simplistic but I really think that this kind of simple checkpoints have been very good. And then one thing that one has to think when planning a course where people are going online uh, tweeting, for example, they may be they may get excited, they may um, want to write more tweets, but also the amount of work that is taken into account it has to be measurable some somehow and it it should be a it should not be too much so really uh, 15 tweets with historical background uh, was quite a lot of work combined with the lectures and everything it might be equal to 100 words in a blog text or something like that so so really uh, it's it's important to think these as as bytes as small pieces they as and as i said they may be um the co course may be structured around this kind of small bytes or also you can use them as a more um, ca casual occasional um, way in as, as one exercise during a course that is focused on some um, some uh, specific topic anyway uh, as i said i had found these uh, uh, solutions quite good so that at one bite students learn more about historical events they learn about historical sources and also about the ways of sharing information 
and at, and at the same time, as I said, it's one bite. It should be digestible. One cannot pour all the internet over over the student at one uh, occasion. Then um, this was the story of the Twitter course. And in the end of this presentation, I give a list of publications. We have published one um, small report in Finnish about this Twitter course and how we organized it. Then there are, of course, other ways of combining exercises um, on historical events, sources, and the ways of sharing information. And I will mention some of them. Uh, lately, uh, during the courses that I have given uh, this term and the previous term, um, students have been, for example, writing descriptions and analyses of paintings that are available in Finnish National Gallery. Uh, this is a work in progress, but uh, we, um, the students were uh, in. Uh, uh, students uh, were given guidelines on how to write descriptions that could be also published um, in next to the pictures, uh, paintings that are available in the gallery. And we are in the progress of, um, uh, so we will see if, if we manage to get them published. Uh, there are um, different pragmatic uh, practical things, um, but of course we have been planning this in cooperation with the Finnish National Gallery. Again, uh, it was one course and this was one task that the students had. So, so it was one bite and, and we hope that it will um, lead to results uh, later on. Then we have had uh, cooperation with archives in courses that have dealt with um, a different uh, using of different sources. Um, for example, uh, students have been transcribing letters that have that were written to historical persons such as Elias Lundrud. These it was a it's part of a bigger project of uh, of transcribing uh, letters um, archived in the. Uh, Finnish archives of the Finnish Literature Society. Uh, students have been amending machine-read transcriptions of military records together with um, employees of the National Archives of Finland. And all these uh, projects have the uh, aim to connect the students to real um, real institutions, real projects that are going on to give them uh, tools and skills that may be useful later on when they uh, are finished with their studies. And currently we have a course where we are focusing on uh, wiki-based platforms, um, writing amendments and articles to Wikipedia and, uh, and other uh, other wiki-based um, platform. Um, uh, I have been using the Helsinki Term Bank for the Arts and Sciences, where students students have written preliminary suggestions for amendments to be made on this uh, um, bank for terms. And then we are currently uh, building a local history wiki farm that uh, and, and, and in, in this course the students are participating to the building practical building and, and writing of articles to the uh, local history wiki platform so there are and, and again there are I want there to be real connections to real uh, communications that are directed to both scholars and uh, people interested in history and uh, research. Uh, and then to end with some other examples, um, um, those who are familiar with uh, social media, 
are probably also familiar with memes and um, I have not been actively using memes on teaching but um, but it is something that has been bubbling under. Um, here you can see um, some uh, uh, memes and uh, and and you can see the links links to the actual uh, tweets uh, at, at the at the bottom of the of the slide and uh, these um, these memes deal uh, partly with um, with the things that are taught about history at school there are some uh, years and events that are uh, thought to be uh, important and uh, and necessary to learn all the while um, while students may feel that they are not that important or that the context of the special event is not quite clear for them so there are some memes that we have we have made uh, related to the uh, treaty of pakinasari uh, 23, um, which has been criticized as being uh, something that everybody remembers after uh, going to school in Finland and uh, has no idea of what the point of it was. This is, as I said, this is something um, that is bubbling under and uh, I show them as a uh, as, as something that might be of of interest, but otherwise uh, there are these. These were the digibytes that I wanted to uh, show you, and uh, little by little there will be more of them. When I started with the Helsinki 1918 course, I was kind of thinking that uh, well, this will be a really small step, but uh, it has been uh, one step after another. Uh, me and my colleagues have learned uh, new things about using uh, digital tools, ICT tools, and solutions when when teaching. And and this will be continued. And uh, and with these words, I want to thank you for listening. And I can see that there was coming on on chat, uh, chat, but I could not read them, but I will comment on if they are, if there are relevant issues. And here is the further reading uh, list, uh, which informs you more about what I have been talking about. I hope that this was somehow useful. Thank you. And, and now it's time to return to Xenia.